Please give me gang, give me gang, give me gang. Just a short step. Hello. Are you guys doing it? You're right. It's a good response. We've seen far too many fucking comedians by now. Um, it's a nice response, by the way. I like the silence when I go on stage. It's very telling every time I go on. The same thing. I say hello. Some of you say hello. Then I say the second sentence. You look here, my accent, and you go, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> It's a very normal response, it's a very British response. Nothing wrong with that. Don't feel bad by this. It's a very important when you guys hear an accent, your brains go into fucking overdrive, don't they guys? <laughs> like, I can tell you for a fact that right now, like nothing else matters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I don't tell you where I'm from, you will spend the next however long thinking to yourselves, yeah, he's funny, but uh, where the fuck's he from? <laughs> Do you know where he's from? I come from uh, Newcastle, but uh, it's nice here. <laughs> I live in Newcastle, I've lived there for 15 years. Uh, uh, I'm actually from Greece originally. Uh, sometimes people uh, hear that and go, oh, George, 15 years, wow. Are you comfortable now with the English language? Yes, I am. Can you tell the accents? Yes, I can. Or like the Northern Irish, or the Scottish, or the Scouts, and the, the Cockney. Yes, I can. George, can you do any of those accents? And I'm like, mate, if I could do any of those accents, why the fuck would I choose this? <laughs> I know what this shit sounds like, you know? I have run the experiment, the results are in. If you take a Greek boy and you stick him in Newcastle upon time for 15 years, what you get is a uh, Borat. Um, <laughs> or Manuel from Faulty Towers. <laughs> and I enjoy it here. Uh, I love uh, the response of sometimes when I tell people I'm Greek. Say, uh, like, racism is bad. Okay, we we'll establish racism. But, like, that was even worse. Like, positive racism, like, sometimes really fucking annoys me. When I tell people, oh, I'm from Greece, and I get this thing, people are so proud to say it right away. Oh, you're from Greece? I've been to Greece, I've been to Greece. <laughs> Lovely people. <laughs> and it's always the hands on the chest when you say this phrase, right? Like you're so proud to not be racist, you know what I mean? And you say it for so many countries. Morocco? Oh, Morocco, I've been to Morocco. Lovely people. <laughs> Egypt, oh, they're so warm and lovely, lovely, lovely people. She said, no, it's never for France, though. You know everything else. I went to France, how was it? Beautiful country. The worst thing about saying lovely people, the way you say it, is like you're surprised that we are lovely. You know what I mean? Like you went to Greece on the way on the plane, you're like, ah, I can't trust this lot if I'm honest. I have a massive sense of apprehension about the entire experience. And then you arrive, you look around, and you go, oh, they're lovely. I should tell the others. Second reason I'm annoyed by that is that lovely people, it's a gross generalization, like we have cunts too, you know what I mean? Like cunts are not an exclusive privilege of British society. We have cunts where I come from as well, right? There's plenty of fucking cunts in Greece as well. Do you know why they're lovely? Because they want your fucking money. But I'm guilty of that as well, I'm guilty of that as well. My landlord has hired a... Uh, a cleaner to come every month and clean our shit in the house and uh, it's nice, I was looking forward never had a cleaner before my life, I was like wow this, uh, I, I live in the castle, uh, 250 pounds a month, fucking money well spent and uh, <laughs> that's my rent guys, that's my fucking rent, right? <laughs> what? Now you hate me, I know, sorry <laughs> but uh, uh, the, guy, um, the guy came over, the cleaner came over, very excited and then I was, uh, had a racist moment, had a racist moment because my cleaner was English 
white English, and I couldn't handle that shit. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the Polish lady? <laughs> The white English man came to clean my house, I cannot trust this. Okay? <laughs> but I gave him a chance. And what do you know? Uh, English people, lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> Working, you know, so hard working and honest, you know, like not afraid to put in a hard day's work. <laughs> and this guy wasn't even from Newcastle, he was born and raised in Scarborough, but he came to Newcastle for a better life. <laughs> you know, back in Scarborough, <laughs> he was a doctor. Love the food in Britain. You have great food. Uh, if you are, I think, if you're thinking that uh, this is your doing, it's not. If you want uh, to know who to thank for the food in Britain, it's uh, my lot. Whatever the fuck this is, and brown. <laughs> we have improved your food. You fuckers have done nothing, right? <laughs> and the food I love the most is Italian food. We're trying to think how much I like Italian food. But I think I have the perfect way to describe how good Italian food is. Uh, Italian food is so good, we forgave them for being Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> because they were, weren't they? They were there, with like, the fucking Mussolini and Hitler were hunting food, doing Nazi shit, you know what I mean? But for some reason, no one mentions Italy. <laughs> Why? Because in 1946 we all looked at Italy and we went, You did what? You piece of shit. Oh, is that pizza? <laughs> all right, you cheeky little monkey. <laughs> the Italians have the cuisine to back their shit up, you know what I mean? The Germans don't, you know? Italians, spaghetti bolognese, pizza, candolis, espresso. Fucking everything, like, there was that fucking Hans? What sauerkraut? Fuck off, you Nazi <laughs> All right, Mario, come here, but don't do it again, okay? <laughs> I have a joke, and I think it's racist. I'm not sure if it's racist. I'm gonna say it now. <laughs> if it's racist, forget I said it. Um, <laughs> you could chant it's racist. Have I figured it out? This is the joke. It might be racist, right? Um, trigger warning, might be racist. <laughs> Been watching a documentary about Genghis Khan. You know Genghis Khan? Yeah, Big Mongol explorer, conquered most of Asia. Genghis Khan, right? He did so well in his uh, conquering career that um, he uh, dominated so much of Asia that he had sex with hundreds, if not thousands of women. They did a genetic uh, background search in uh, Asia, turns out, like 7.8% uh, of all modern day Asian people directly descend from Genghis Khan. <laughs> so, uh, some of them do look alike. My show was called The uh, Ugly Babies Make Me Love. And, uh, <laughs> we've been there, haven't we? Someone shows you a picture of the baby, you know, look at my beautiful baby. And you go, oh, fuck me, what a man you <laughs> You don't say anything, do you? You just hand a picture back and you go, yeah, looks like you every time. Right? <laughs> and we've 
Which one to advertise my show? Actually, Dennis Lepila takes about 5,000 5, pounds to advertise your show in Edinburgh successfully. 5,000 pounds. Good enough for that. I had an idea. I didn't go through with it, but I was pretty happy with it. What I was going to have done is I would have put uh, posters all over Edinburgh, uh, George Akalopoulos, ugly babies make me laugh, and then underneath we'll have a picture of a baby boy, three months old, fully naked, and underneath the photograph we will say, hot or not, ring <laughs> Obviously, an appalling thought. People go, oh, that's disgusting. I'm going to be sexualizing a baby boy. That is disgusting. That is exactly the PR I need to advertise my show. <laughs> and when people, like, when it came to people's outrage, oh my god, I can't believe he's saying that, uh, it would transpire that this baby is me. <laughs> Age three months. I just publicized a photograph of myself when I was little. <laughs> and I hope people would then go, I guess that's all right. <laughs> about this a bit longer, and then I thought about this. If that is okay, then maybe I have the answer to one of the world's biggest problems. If that is okay, then maybe the world would be a better place if pedophiles got together in a group and exchanged photographs from when they were kids. <laughs> Perfectly fine, right? <laughs> I think it's the big gun version of childhood pornography because no one gets hurt. You know, it's organic, it's ethical, it's, it's fair and trained. I'll give you one, do you give me one? I can't see any downsides. I think the only problem is it will make the news boring. Man was found today with 4,000 photographs of naked babies. Turns out they were all his friends. <laughs> I really think it will stop pedophilia. It will really stop it. Because there's only so many times you can jack off to a five month old photograph of your 55 year old friend called Keith. <laughs> and not go, oh, I should really reassess my choices here. <laughs> Last bit I want to discuss, um, I've been thinking about how our grandparents are embarrassing us. My grandparents particularly, like uh, they embarrass me, you know, they're homophobic, like a bit racist. We all have old relatives that embarrass us. They come across as racist and as homophobic because they're using language that is no, it's, it's redundant now. They're using language that is now offensive. The world around them changed and they can't cope with it. It's not like they have racist thoughts. They just have racist words, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like I have, like, you, 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 you know, you have grandparents. Not, not all our grandparents are racist, but most of them are fucking embarrassing, right? <laughs> we can agree on that. And I think maybe, no matter, because my grandma was like fighting for feminism in Greece in the 60s, and now she's a fucking horrible bitch, but back then, <laughs> she encouraged social change in the most progressive way. Back then, she was fucking burning brass and going to like protest, and I was like, shut the fuck up, my grandma, like you're embarrassing everybody, right? And now I'm thinking maybe, maybe, in the same way that we are progressive nowadays, when we grow older, we will embarrass our grandkids. How we will embarrass the grandkids? What will change around us that will make us uncomfortable about the world? And I think I've got it. I think what will happen in 15 years' time is that incest will become legal and acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't be able to handle that shit, man. <laughs> Even as I'm saying it, it's disgusting, you know what I mean? But that is exactly the reason why my grandkids will fucking hate me. Because, come on, grandma, don't, grandma, don't be a fucking incestophobe. I can't take it, right? <laughs> but it will be the same argument that um, back in, like, in the 60s, gay people presented. Like, if two adults that are consenting adults want to have sex in the privacy of their own bedroom, who the fuck are you to tell them they cannot? I know, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> But that's why our grandkids will hate us. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is, it, it, it is horrible, like, it, for, for real. But it is also, like, by the way, I'm not talking about the kind of incest that's disgusting, like, you know, like uncle and like little girl. I'm talking like lateral incest. <laughs> <laughs> Brother and sister kind of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh no, it's disgusting. But think about it, it's like the purest form of love. How do you do it? Childhood sweethearts. <laughs> How is 
Lucy, will it be to meet the parents? <laughs> My mommy loved you after the morning forever. <laughs> People have this argument, they say, oh no, George. Okay. How about their kids? The kids will be deformed. The kids will be deformed. I thought about it, right? Yeah, the kids might be deformed, but there's many people who have hereditary disabilities. Are you going to stop them from fucking? Because they're going to have like disabled kids? No, no, mate, you can't fuck, you have the eczema. You can't do this, right? <laughs> and did you think, if your only concern is deformed kids, that you must be okay with gay incest? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, if I'm honest. <laughs> this is not the world's longest speech before I tell you I'm fucking my sister, by the way. This is... <laughs> Just a thought experiment, guys. Not my older sister, anyway. But, um... <laughs> Some of you might hate this joke. Some of you might like this joke. Um... It's all relative, and uh, <laughs> 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 always finish strong. Um, okay. Um, I genuinely think I'm done. Um, <laughs> this is the night for new material, and you guys really took it in your stride. You know what I mean? Like, this is not the stuff I talk about on a stag do weekend fucking heavy crowd. You know what I mean? Like. Hey, we have dicks on our fucking, you know, when like stack dudes turn up, they have inflatable dicks on their heads. <laughs> Tell everybody, but it's about incest. Oh no, get the fuck out of here. Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> it's good. Felt good to get this out. Do you have anything else to talk about? Pizza. Wonderful. Chinese. Pito. Incest. Jerusalem. I have one. Um, <laughs> I was watching, all right, I'll go with this. Uh, I was watching a, a news report. Donald Trump said that uh, Israel, uh, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, as far as he's concerned. Uh, obviously, most of the people in, Jer in Palestine were fucking furious, right? One of the streets protested against, against Donald Trump, burnt flags. We've all seen the scenes, haven't we? Like the Middle East, when they get angry at America, they burn all these flags, they burn pictures of the president. Like, I'm watching them every time, thinking, mate, for a country that hates America, you got way too many fucking American flags. <laughs> Just lying about. <laughs> no, how many flags do you need for a country that we hate? I think it's the biggest marketing like trick the printing industry pulled off in fucking Palestine, no? Are you angry about America? Come buy our flags. <laughs> Highly flammable. <laughs> I think it's the only time. Like you know like how people say like in there. Like there must be some idiots like in Palestine that like Trump. You know what I mean? Because there must be at least one turkey that votes for Christmas. <laughs> at least one fucking moron, you know? Doesn't know what's good for him, loves Trump, lives in Palestine, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm an idiot. Okay, you know? That is a perfect time for that moron to like equip himself with American flags and pictures of Donald Trump and not get fucking his ass kicked on the streets. Where are you going with this one, Hamid? I'm going to burn it. <laughs> All right, go along. Don't worry, don't, don't, I will never do this. You fucking love me, don't love you. <laughs> okay, I am proper now. Um, very much enjoy this, guys. Uh, look, if you want to uh, follow me on uh, social media, it's a uh, Greek comedian. Um, if you don't, then um, who gives a fuck? Uh, <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Like, uh, it was really tough material. I'm really happy you went through this. Like, I tried to ease you in with it. You're fucking, oh, so wonderful. Like, turn is it, is it, is it, is it, is it. All right, are you all laughing? Great. Incest. Oh. <laughs> the fuck was that, George? I know. Good night. Uh, but, guys, uh, you've been great. This club is fantastic. Uh, keep supporting it. Uh, thank you very much. Back to Mark. <laughs> <laughs>